You know what we've done as a church and don't even realize it? We've compared ourselves among ourselves. We've followed our own experiences. And we lean on our own experience at the cost of grace that's here to change our experience. And we think it's humility to say, yeah, but brother, we're always going to sin and it's a wonder he considers us. He doesn't consider us. It doesn't even have anything to do with sin. The reason he took away sin is to restore truth, to restore purpose. While you were yet a sinner, he's considering you. You said it in your rap. I paid attention. He said, somehow you see the sin in me and yet you see the sun in me. Didn't you say something like that? I was paying attention. You had me, dude. I was like, I was feeling it. I was looking at Brandon trying to learn how to move. Brandon got it, man. Brandon just got it. So I was looking at him. I was watching Brandon. I thought, man, if I could just move like that. But I heard that. Isn't it amazing he can see the sin in me and yet go after the sun in me that the sin in me doesn't disqualify the sun in me? That's powerful. Why are we afraid to preach that and believe that? It's the goodness of God. It's seeing his first love. It's going, oh my goodness, now I get it. Why well, was yet a sinner? Christ died for me. Why? Because he knows there's more to my life than sin. And he knows, forgive him, Father, he don't have a clue. He don't even understand. Let me make it plain. You're worth dying for, boy. There's more to your life than you get, and I understand it, so I'm here on the cross paying this price. And all of a sudden I go, whoa. He did that to change me, not just forgive me. Don't stop with forgiveness. The goal isn't forgiveness. The goal is transformation. So you people that never heard me preach, here's the whole nutshell. The whole nutshell of why Jesus came, why God sent his son on the cross is not to take you to heaven. It's to transform you back into love and make you what he made man in the first place. Man was complete and fulfilled in God. He sinned and got separated from God. He got cut off from the source of love and became in need of love. And everybody in this room was born into that lie and that deficit. And we've all needed love. But to know the love of Christ is to be filled with all the fullness of God. It passes knowledge. Wow. Filled with the fullness of God. All of a sudden, to know the love of Christ is where I find the true me. Brings me back to the place before sin where I'm one with God. Wow. I'm fulfilled again and I'm free again. Let's get it on. It's the whole purpose of the cross. We haven't taught this thing nationwide. We haven't taught this thing. How come other countries are willing to die for their faith? They're sneaking around and they could die at any minute. There's, there's nations. They're, they're in Iran. There's Christians in Iran right now. And, and, and I was just talking to some people and they're all connected and they're, and they're over there. And it's humbling and it's crazy. And, and the men know that if they catch them, they'll kill them and they won't kill their wives. They'll just rape them over and over and over like they're punishing them for being believers. And yet their wives are saying, don't you renounce Christ. Let's go after this thing. We love not our own lives. Yeah. And we'll lose faith because we had a fender bender. We'll be mad at God because we got laid off. We'll wonder why he didn't pay the rent. And we ain't praying until he talks to me and gets this thing straight. And I get a check in the mail. And I get supernatural provision. Somehow we bought into this serve me gospel. Instead, I'll lay down my life and die to me and pick up my cross and follow you. Don't you buy into this thing to keep self-centeredness alive. Watch, I'm getting a little aggressive. You will never, ever, ever fulfill the will of God if you don't deal with that lie called self-centeredness. You'll never fulfill the will of God. You'll be in all the right places. You'll be in all the right atmosphere. But you won't manifest the right things because you're living from the wrong place. He said, if you're going to follow me and you're going to come after me, Matthew 16, there's something I need you to do. You've got to deny yourself. What's that look like? That's you realizing you were never made for you. This ain't about you. This ain't about you feeling better. This ain't about you just getting more provision. This ain't about you casting your bread on the water and waiting for a whole loaf to come back on the next tide. It's about you dying so you can truly live. It's about you never again making it about you, but making it about His great name. 
And there's integrity in that. There's character in that. There's honor toward God in that. It's what keeps me from blowing up on people. It's what changed me on the inside where I'm not tempted to have a fallout with my wife, where she can't even pull me into animosity because I'm not on the earth to debate with her. I'm on the earth to shine. And I'm possessed by that truth. That truth has come into my heart. You get what I'm saying? You see how aggressive I'm preaching it? So I'm either a twisted man trying to impress you or I'm impressed. And I'm trying to live off this temporal high of wowing you with a message. Or am I enjoying my life in Christ? <laughs> See, you heard the old saying, I've lived bound and I live free. And free is much better. What made me bound? Not because I was addicted to a substance. Not because I was repeatedly visiting some website. What made me bound is because every day I woke up for the wrong reason and lived the wrong thing. Every day I was living for me when I was made for his image.